Hi guys, welcome to the Power DSP lessons. This is P. Madan Morgan coming to you from Jasmine InfoTag. In this first part of the sampling, we are going to see about why sampling theorem is needed and why this is especially needed in discrete domain and why there is no such theorem in analog domain. There is a frequency domain ambiguity in the discrete samples that doesn't exist in the analog signal world. We are going to see what that ambiguity is. Let's start with a typical DSP system and its components. The simplified block diagram is shown here. Input is an analog signal which is continuous in time and amplitude. This analog signal is fed to an anti-aliasing filter and the purpose of this filtering is to attenuate aliasing distortions which I will explain in the subsequent sections. Converting the analog signal to digital is carried out in the analog to digital converter which is the two stage process. The first stage is a sampling followed by a quantization. The next one is a digital hardware which may be a digital computer or digital signal processor or microprocessor and whatever it may be but it should be a digital one. The last one is a digital to analog converter which is the reverse process of ADC. Here the digital signal is converted back to analog signal for real world applications. So what is sampling? Sampling is the process of converting a continuous analog signal into discrete time signal. It is periodic and we are taking samples at regular intervals of time. Ts is the sampling time. For every Ts, we are getting a new sample. The sampling frequency is nothing but 1 by Ts, which is denoted by Fs. This is a 1 8th sine wave. The number of cycles per second is called the frequency of the signal. Here there is only one cycle per second, so the frequency of this signal is 1 8th. Now, we are going to sample this 1 8th signal with the sampling frequency of 8 8th. That means, we are going to take 8 samples from this signal at the regular intervals of time. At 0 second, first sample is taken. At 0.1 second, second sample is taken. Similarly, at 0.2 second, third sample is taken and so forth. The adjacent table shows 8 samples that is taken after sampling. This is a 9 hertz signal. There are 9 cycles in 1 second. So it is a 9 hertz signal. Again, we are going to sample this 9 hertz signal with the sampling frequency of 8 hertz. That is, we are going to take 8 samples from these 9 cycles in 1 second. The adjacent table shows the samples. In this slide, we can see both the 1 8 and 9 8 sine waves and both are sampled with the same sampling frequency of 8 8. The samples that we get from both of these signals are the same. That we can readily see in these tables. X of n is taken from 1 8 and Y of n is taken from 9 8. We can visualize it by seeing the overlapping of the circle and cross in the figure here. And this is a big problem. Two signals are giving the same samples. Suppose if I give the same exact samples to you and ask you to find out from which signal these samples are taken. What is your answer? Some may tell these samples might have taken from 1 8 and some may tell these samples might have taken from 9 8 signal. Which one is correct? This is an ambiguity. Suppose if we have an input signal which contains both of these 1 8 and 9 8 signal, then how can we differentiate the 1 8 and 9 8? This is not the only case which gives identical samples and there are innumerable frequency components which will give the same samples. Here we can see those frequencies F0 plus KFS. F0 is positive or negative and similarly K is positive or negative. In our above example, we have chosen F0 as 1 8, Fs is equal to 8 and K is equal to 1. We can see here other components that produce the same samples with the sampling frequency of 8 8s. These components are called aliasing frequencies. When k is equal to 1, 9 is the aliasing frequency. That's why we got same samples from 1 and 9 8 Similarly, when k is equal to 2, 17 8 is an aliasing frequency and so on. 
this side we can see the components when k is having a negative values. Ultimately, we need to reconstruct only one signal unambiguously from the given samples in the given band of spectrum. This is our aim and goal. If it is not possible to reconstruct only one signal from the given samples, then we are going to process with misinformation and end up with wrong results. However, there are so many frequency components which produce the same samples. What is the reason for this? This is all based on sampling frequency. We can solve this problem of two or more frequency components having the same samples in the given band of frequency spectrum only by choosing the correct sampling frequency. So, the sampling theorem plays a vital role in selecting a proper sampling frequency which avoids problem like aliasing. Hence, sampling theorem is very much needed in digital domain. In analog domain, signals are continuous and we can define the value at any particular instant. So, innumerable samples are required to represent it and there is no need for sampling theorem or alike in analog domain. Okay, if you have any comments and suggestions, please send it to the email id pmadan.edu at gmail.com. This is P. Madan Morgan for, for DSP lessons. Meet you again guys. Until then, bye bye.